cheating ex, 28 female, texted me 29 male six months after breakup. What should I do? Plus update. Original post. Last year, I discovered that my then-girlfriend of one year was using Tinder and has cheated on me. We were living together at a time. Here is how the breakup happened. I confronted her in person. She kept lying to my face until I just threw apartment keys at her and walked away. She then texted me with angry messages, calling me names and denying it. Later, she acknowledged the cheating but said that the guy meant nothing to her and I'm the jerk for screwing up the relationship. Later, she came up with a half-baked apology for lying, said that she is in the wrong but still tried to gaslight me that I overreacted and got the whole thing completely wrong. During these interactions, I tried to act cold, tried not to show emotions, did not raise my voice, did not call her names, etc. But deep down, I was exploding. At all these times, I felt that all these words were left and said. She cheated on me, then tried to guilt trip me in a very ugly fashion. And I really feel like I haven't stood up for myself. Now, she's texting me. I haven't even opened a message, only saw it on preview. She's trying to look friendly, added smileys and stuff. I really want to tell her a lot of awful words. All that crap that has been boiling inside of me all this time. I wrote it out in a text file, and it is a bunch of spiteful sentences. And it looks pathetic as I reread it, since someone would put so much energy into that text. I know it's coming from the bad place, but I feel like I was hurt really bad, and I bottled up my response. And now is my chance to lash it all out on her. If I don't do it, I feel like it'll keep on boiling inside of me. Is it even worth it to be the bigger man in this case? I'm very confused now. I'd love to hear some thoughts about what I should do. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Answering her in any kind of way will surely give her satisfaction. In some cases, ignorance is the best. Thank you. I really needed someone else's opinion. I am glad that I did not act on impulse. And instead of flashing out on X, I just vented on Reddit. The woman blamed you for screwing up the relationship, but not her cheating. Leave it on red. That'll be more damaging than anything. Reminded me of this video I saw. A guy gave his girlfriend a paternity test he got done, proving he is their daughter's father. She first denied it, saying she is his daughter, trying to deny scientific proof. Then she started asking him, Why did you do this to us? Real narcissist crap. Like, what the heck are you talking about? I did this to us. Best thing to do is to ignore her and don't even give her the satisfaction that she can make you emotional. She is in your past. Let her stay there. Thanks, friend. I've calmed down, read through the comments, and I'm not texting her back. I honestly don't want to. Also, she texted me again. Lol. I will post an update. I assure you that she was trying to fish out a nice reply or reconciliation from you to ease her guilt. In not replying, you didn't do that. You walked away clean and she stayed dirty. Her having cheated is still bothering her to this day, and she'll never have the satisfaction of knowing you hold no hard feelings. This will always deep down eat away at her. Kudos, my man. Take satisfaction in that. And now for the update. Wow, thanks for all the support and advice. I really needed someone with a cold mind to give me an outside opinion. It means a lot to me, even though you are the strangers from the internet. I did not open the message from the ex, and an hour later she texted me again. She tried to blame me again, lol. It goes something like this. I must have been too naive to think that we are not enemies and that you would respond. Don't bother blocking me here. I'll never text you again. Some context. I blocked her everywhere soon after the breakup. She reached out to me via this older messenger, which older people use in my country that I use only to stay in touch with my parents and my landlord. I'm not opening that message, and I really don't want to see or talk to her. Your comments really helped me to look at it from a different angle and I'm happy that I did not reply to her and went to Reddit instead. Lol. It feels good now, like I've had some kind of closure. Hope it will last. Anyway, I'll be fine. Sounds like Opie just needed to vent. And doing it on Reddit in the way he did to a bunch of strangers you can walk away from is probably better than blowing up at the ex. Sounds like she wanted that blow up honestly. Good and Opie for not giving in. Even bad attention is attention. It seems like ignoring these people is almost always the best strategy, if your goal is to hurt them. Well, then she can also play the victim, not just for the general social circle, but convince herself even more that what she did wasn't so bad. I get the point of not responding, but sometimes it's good to take out of your system. 
When my ex called me to get the number of some moving guys, I knew it's because she was moving in with her boyfriend, the same dude she had an affair with, and she had denied being in a relationship with just a couple months earlier, yelling, people don't know my life, like a 16-year-old despite being a 30-year-old woman. We had some mutual friends who had filled me in. I didn't hold back my words, pointed out her lies again, playing it cool using a known line from a popular movie in my country, saying she's not my problem anymore, and told her to get lost. To be honest, it felt pretty good, and it gave me a cool story to tell. That sounds like a power play on her part. Like she called to rub it in your face and get in your head. Love that you told her to go pound salt. Lol. It definitely was, but at that time she wasn't able to do it anymore. Although as someone pointed out in another comment that even bad attention is attention, she only stopped reaching out to me when about three months before she got married. I threatened to forward her absolutely ill-intended messages to her dude. Second story. Update. I'm finally ready to leave my husband, but he can't understand why. Original post. My story is probably the opposite of anyone here, but for me it made sense, even though it doesn't for my husband and the rest of my family. I needed to write somewhere to see if there's anybody out there who understands me, or am I as anyone around me believes? Going mental? My husband cheated on me five years ago on a work trip. His colleague sent me the private video she made. Apparently, they slept together. She used the video to get him to start a relationship with her, and when he refused, she exposed him to me. I was in utter shock. This just couldn't happen to us. How could he do this to me when he said he loved me so much? I couldn't take the images out of my head. I was broken and paralyzed, I think. Because while the normal reaction should have been to yell and shout and leave him, I just went into a depression and was too weak to take actions. He asked for marriage counseling, and for two years I lived in this depressed trance, and I honestly don't remember thinking of anything but my husband and his affair, seeing the images she sent me whenever I closed my eyes. After a few months, and with the therapist's recommendation, he tried to get intimate with me, but it just triggered my PTSD. I was so embarrassed to give him my body, when it wasn't enough for him. I felt so disgusting and ugly, and him touching me was so, so shameful. Like, why would he want something that wasn't enough? Something so disgusting? I tried to make me believe that I was beautiful and more than enough and that it was him, not me, and it was never about me not being enough. But for me, it was all lies and a bunch of gibberish. I knew for a fact I was disgusting, and I had proof. My husband's cheating. After two years, things were getting brighter. The nightmares and images started fading, and individual and couples therapy did miracles. I started to love myself again, and sometimes it went days without even thinking of my husband's affair. We started being intimate again after three years, and while the image of him with her was always there, I thought that I just had to live with it. Here is where I might be weird. Now, five years later, I'm fully happy feel that I have gained back the control over my life and I put that whole ordeal behind me. But at the same time, now I feel that my marriage is over. My husband is in total disarray. Why now when we are finally happy again? When I'm back to be my old self and finally is over what he did? I even forgave him. I did. But I don't understand his confusion. For me, now I'm happy and strong again. I feel I want more. For myself, my life, and from the man I share my life with. I couldn't leave when I was too weak to think properly and without bias. I couldn't leave when I didn't have a free will, consumed by grief. Why can't you see that it was a healthy way of thinking not making decisions while hurting? Am I wrong? I'm 35 now. I want to start a family. I want to start this family with someone who would never have done this to me. Doesn't this make sense? One of the greatest lines I've ever heard is, It's not that I don't forgive you, I just know better now. You can never undo the damage created by cheating on someone. Even if you learn to live with it, their relationship is forever changed. This is not what you signed up for. Facing for better or worse assumes you are doing it as a couple. Cheating violates that contract. My ex-husband cheated on me and then lied about it multiple times even after I was sure. I decided that I was too in love and he was too perfect to have lied to me. Spoiler alert, he lied and it shattered me and we never got over it. I should have broken up with him, but instead we got engaged. In retrospect, we never got over it. It wasn't so much the act of putting his member in somebody else. It was looking me dead in the face and telling me I was crazy for thinking that it was true. You're allowed to forgive him and find yourself again and still not want to be married to him. He broke you down. 
You built yourself back up. This is exactly what I did. I'm sure everyone's definition of forgiveness can be different. But I'll say that when I became indifferent and focused more on what I wanted out of my life and future, I had no option but to leave. And because I made that decision, I'm now less than two weeks away from achieving my biggest dream for the past six plus years. Interestingly, while we were going through the process of divorce slash shortly after divorce, there was a period of time when my ex-wife acted apologetic, admittedly in a passive-aggressive faux bashful kind of way, and actually seemed to take an interest in me and be kind to me. Her family, and mine for that matter, applied a huge amount of pressure on me to get back with her, and it took everything in me to resist. In fact, I'm shocked that I did. I'm still in wed and had no romantic slash intimate relationships for years afterwards and few friendships for that matter. So I can't say that within a few months I was laughing and soaring through life. However, at that moment, things do seem to be looking up. I think as a result of that entire nasty experience, a part of me will always be hesitant and hurt, but it's getting better now. After just a few months in my new relationship, I've been able to share more and receive more compassion than I did with my wife of years. Yours is not an unusual story for those who chose to reconcile after infidelity, especially those with a remorseful spouse. At some point, you wake up and realize you want and need more. You've worked through your trauma and your grief, and you've emerged stronger and more capable, more in control of your desires and what you want from your life and a romantic partner. Those with unremorseful spouses struggle more because they're still trying to win the approval of someone who betrayed them. It's harder to get to a place of strength, your decision makes sense to me. More importantly, it makes sense to you. And that's all that should matter. That makes perfect sense to me. Sometimes we have to fully go through the trauma to come out stronger on the other side. This experience allowed you to realize what you really want from life and to go after it. It's terrible that you had to go through it. I am so sorry for that pain. But now you can go forward and start a new exciting chapter in your life on your own terms doing it with full confidence that you are a beautiful, capable person. I wish you the best of luck. Now for the update. Hi everyone, I will make my update short but I felt that I have to since you asked for an update. Thank you so much for the support. Not gonna lie, these past couple of days have been very emotional for me. I don't know, but just putting my story out there and receiving all the support did a number on me. I showed my husband this post and a comment, and I showed him the many drafts I made that were longer with more details about what I went through that I didn't feel were necessary to include. He cried the whole time he was reading, especially the comments from the men and women who went through the same experience. He said he always knew how wrong he did me, and that never a day went by without him thinking about how he hurt me for nothing. Now, when he read how long it really took me to heal, Five years of my life because of one hour of pointless fun, he apologized and said that couldn't give me back what it took but that he won't stand in the way of my happiness. He promised me an amicable divorce. He said he will always love me. He just requested to celebrate one last Christmas together and he is moving out after. He said he always knew how wrong he did me. So he could understand why you were ready to leave since the beginning. He just chose not to. No, he didn't understand. Because his shock was genuine. I was doing better each day, and things between us were getting better too. Never like we were of course, but I guess he thought we were heading that way. We were very much in love, and I just had dropped my birth control pills to start for a baby. This post helped him understand how this one thing he did in a moment took all these years for me to heal, and his regret is genuine. It's just not enough or maybe never was relevant in my healing process for better or worse, only applies if your partner isn't the worst. Reminds me of my dislike of the saying, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. Her delay totally makes sense to me. She went into shock, which makes it hard to think or act. Once she got her mental health together again, she was ready to make a change and start over. And good for her. Severe depression like that really is paralyzing like she described. You just drift through life, months and years blending together. You convince yourself you're fine with it because if nothing else, humans are adaptable. It's only when you start to heal that you realize you haven't been living, you've barely been surviving. And the same reason antidepressants come with self-harm warnings. When you're so depressed you're stuck, you often don't have the wherewithal to take action. And in that liminal phase between total depression and true healing, a person might feel strong enough to make decisions for the first time in a while, 
but not stable enough to make a wise one. I'm glad she got out and is optimistic about her future. God, the months and years blend together got me. Compiled, I've lost years of my life to depression either by losing my sense of time or simply not remembering it. You really just do the bare minimum to stay alive. Most recently, I developed eating disorder-like habits because I just didn't care about anything but paying bills to stay afloat and stopped eating intentionally. Insecurity took over, and I noticed and liked that I was skinny for the first time ever. I got a kick in the butt and realized how bad it was when my dad drove five hours to me at random because he was that worried. I started cleaning my house and cooking again. I didn't realize how long depression was messing with me till I got a reality check. It was months. It felt like maybe two weeks that I was in the hole. 